Good evening and welcome. We're coming to you from day two of the Fiji Symposium in Bangalore, the platform for all talks on financial inclusion. And with me is the Executive Director of Business Development for Nigeria Interbank Settlement System. Welcome, Mr. Nia Jao. Yeah, and thank you very much. how does it feel to be part of the first Fiji Symposium? Yeah, I feel honored. I'm so happy to be part of this. Uh, having worked with the uh, Focus Group these last two years, uh, and now being part of this, for me, it makes uh, the journey really more, more and more exciting. Yeah. Uh, because from the work done on the, at, at the focus group uh, level, as we keep making reference in my country to the policy recommendations that were, uh, I mean, that came out as a conclusion of the work there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to gaining more insights, even in the Fiji initiative. Uh, so could you tell us a little more about the potential of digital financial services to increase financial inclusion? Yes, uh, I think there's no gain saying that fact. Yes, the potential is very, very huge. And uh, if I'm to talk about Nigeria, yeah. my country for instance, uh, uh, we have uh, what I call the BVN, uh, mm -hmm. kind of ID for the banking, for the bank, for bank customers. We have about 31 million people now. Uh, now 31 million out of about 100 million adult Nigerians. So the potential uh, bank customers that we show have is by 100 million. We have just about 30, 31 million people. So we still have a challenge of 70 million guys out there who are living their lives, who generally are spending cash. Yeah. So we see DFS as a very, very, very convenient and uh, workable tool that we can use to get these 70 million people into the financial system. So for us, really, DFS is very, very important. And that's why even in this, at Fiji here, you find a number of Nigerians from, yeah. I mean, from the bank, from the telecom industry, everybody looking out, even the government is interested in, okay, how do we bring these people in because there's so much benefit in DFS. And when it comes down to the aspect of security, how is Nigeria actually addressing the security for digital financial services and the implementation of the BVN? Okay, DFS is growing gradually in Nigeria, and as you expect, as it grows, fraud is growing with it. Uh, we're battling today with problems of SIM swap, for instance. Okay. I mean, someone, I can just go once, if, I, if I'm close to you, I know your phone number, I can go to your telco, while you are here busy, I go to your telco and, complain, and tell them that I'm the owner of that phone, and then uh, I, I take over your phone, the, the, the number, take over the number, and with that, I go to your bank and pretend that I'm yourself, and then change, uh, get a new pin for your account, and then begin to spend your money. It's happening seriously. Uh, we have that. We have recycled SIM problems where, uh, you know, if we tell us when, when the SIM is not active for about two to three months, they deactivate and reallocate to someone else. So when it's reallocated, now some guys have phone numbers attached to their accounts. The phone gets lost. Instead of going to reactivate and get a new SIM on that number, they go just get another number, you know. Meanwhile, that number they've thrown away gets into somebody else's hand along the line because, I mean, the telco say, hey, this line has not worked for three months, yeah. they give it to somebody else. So the, a lot, normally a lot of the, of the, uh, the account details, account Thank balance, you. will keep going to this new guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. So some guy just receive that and then they find a way to just go to impersonate and begin to spend this person's money from his account. We're, we're having all those things and then we're having uh, phone, phone phishing. Where someone you just receive an SMS now that says, "Hey, uh, I work with, with your bank. I, I, I'll mention your bank that and that your account is about to to get obsolete, to get inactive. Oh, just get, give call this PDF. number so we can you can clean up your account for you." And some people fall for that kind of uh, SMSs. So you call that number and then they tell you, "Oh, to clean the account, no, to clean it, well, just give us your PIN yeah. or give us your card number." And then people release that, and then guys go out and take people's money. We have another happening. But luckily for us in Nigeria, we have a lot of collaboration between the banking system and the telecom group, and even among the banks and the central banks. So we're able to work together to sit down, look at these problems, and we are, de we are dealing with them one by one. For instance, we have an implementation going on right now to tackle SIM swap and uh, recycle SIM. Um, we're looking at a scenario where um, the telcos have all agreed with us. We're doing some trial right now, where for every uh, DFS transaction that comes over the phone, we make a call out to the telco to say, hey, this phone number is, is about to do this transaction. Please check for me. Let me know if the SIMs have been swapped or recycled within the last 48 hours. If it is, I don't allow the transaction to happen. Okay. Uh -huh. So we're, we're, we're actually working on that now. And they're talking about phone phishing. We're coming up with a, with a system where we watch list on phone numbers. So within the bank, within the banking system, we have a list of phone numbers that have been caught along the line with this phone phishing. 
Because normally when, when you have a phone phishing case, uh, you have the phone number of the guy of the of, of the sender, okay. and I have the phone number I'm asked to call. So I have two numbers. So I can watch those two numbers in a database. And once I put in my watch list, all banks have access to it. So whenever anybody comes to say, hey, I want to open an account and I put any number in that database, already there's a red flag. So the bank can take a decision whether or not to open an account or open with a very, you know, a very cautious kind of open an account in a very, very cautious manner. So we have these problems, and DFS will have its own problems normally. But for me, the challenge of players, of players in the market, is to ensure that we understand the risks and we put countermeasures in place to mitigate the risk. And a lot of that is happening in Nigeria. I hope you continue to do that. Thank yeah. you so much.